Pokemon Go has had its first wave of Galar Pokemon in the game. And I bet some of you want to know who the winners and losers are of this Galar invasion. Well, that's why you came here to Swag Tips. I'm going to let you know which Pokemon have lucked out in the Move Pool Lottery and uh, which ones are kind of lagging behind, maybe not all that great. And I'll also talk about PvP and raid content. When it comes to the raid side of things, there's only one Pokemon that really won. One Pokemon that's really worth discussing here, and that is Galar Darmanitan, which is an ice type Pokemon, right? And it got the Ice Fang and the Avalanche. So the base form of Galar Darmanitan is beating out the Mamoswine in terms of DPS, as well as DPS to the third power times TDO, which is a more useful metric for a Pokemon's overall goodness. So I'd say, good job, Galar Darmanitan. What's even more impressive, however, is the Zen mode. Now we don't have the Zen mode right now in Pokemon Go. I don't know when we're gonna get the Zen mode, but when we do, this Pokemon is gonna redefine what it means to be an ice type attacker. It got the same Ice Fang Avalanche moveset, but its damage per second is just through the freaking roof. I ran some simulations on this guy. In snowy weather, you can solo the Rayquaza. So no, uh, you know, best friend bonus. Nobody's in the lobby with you. It's just you and like 24 Zen mode Kyler Darmanitans when it's snowing outside and the tier 5 Rayquaza and you can solo it. So right now this Pokemon is not currently in the game. We only have the base form. The base form is better than Mamoswine so that is pretty hype to begin with. But you might want to save your candies for when the Zen mode comes out because the Zen mode is just insane. It is just completely insane. And I mean we got Shadow Weavile to be a nice type anyways, right? So uh, you really want a good investment? Focus on this guy. Now when it comes to the Zen mode, it is a fire ice type Pokemon. Yes, this is a flaming snowman. And uh, as it stands, it does not have a fire type fast move. So even though it does have overheat, a fire type charge move, it doesn't have the fast move. So unless it gets the fast move in a future update, it will not be the number one fire type attacker. That said, if it does, it could very easily become the best fire type attacker as well. So keep that in the back of your mind. Now on for the PvP side of things, we have our first loser here, which is Galar Darmanitan. Yeah, so when you look at its stat line here, really high attack, low defense, decent HP, but not a good stat spread for Great League or Ultra League PvP, that's for sure. When it comes to the moveset, it did get Ice Fang, which isn't bad, and it did get Avalanche, which is amazing. And it combos really well with Overheat and Superpower. So the Rock and Steel type Pokemon that want to resist your Ice type damage, well they're going to eat a Superpower to the face, which definitely isn't bad. Now the reason why we lose here is, well, it's, it's not all that good. There's other ice type Pokemon that do the ice type job a bit better. This Pokemon is relatively fragile and it is a mono ice type Pokemon. And being a mono ice type Pokemon isn't all that good because ice types have a lot of weaknesses, very few resistances. So if you are looking for a good ice type attacker, I think I'd rather look at other things than Galar Darmanitan. It's not terrible, it's serviceable, but uh, I'm looking at other things before I look at this guy. Next on the list of losers is Perserker. And I'm actually kind of impressed with how good Perserker turned out. So this is like Galar Persian, but it's a completely different Pokemon. Uh, Perserker, for those that are unaware. So when it comes to the stat line, it's kind of bland. It could be a bit bulkier. If it was a bit bulkier, that could help it out. But it's not exactly a terrible stat line. And where Perserker shines is in its move pool. It got Shadow Claw for good damage and rapid energy gains, and then it got four different flavors of charge move, uh, one of which is not featured here until I click that arrow. Yeah, we got Foul Play, which is a fast dark type attack. We got Iron Head, which isn't bad, especially coming off of a steel type Pokemon. We got Play Rough, which is the best fairy type charge move in the game. And then we got Close Combat, which is one of the best charge moves in the game. Drops your defenses, but dishes out a ton of damage. Now this is all great, but the problem that Berserker has is that it's not exactly doing enough damage. It is doing damage, it has many ways to hit people for effective damage, but even when it does, it's really not enough to take that Pokemon out. So Berserker is good, it's threatening. Uh, certain team comps might be unprepared for it, especially when you got the mystery box moveset going on, uh, but I don't feel like Berserker is gonna have much impact in either the Great League or the Ultra League. If you are into the Silf Arena, you do the Silf Cups, I definitely do see this Pokemon coming up sometime in the future, just because Steel type Pokemon, tons of variety in its charge moves, pretty aggressive for a Steel type Pokemon. So I could see Berserker shining in the future. But right now, not all that good, especially in GBL. And 
then for our final loser on this list of losers, we have Galar Linen. Now, Galar Linen actually didn't lose that much. It got what I wanted and expected it to if you saw my original Galar like, predictive analysis. And that is that it got Snarl and it got Body Slam. So, same stats as the OG Linen, plus a Dark Typing, plus Body Slam. Body Slam would be phenomenal on normal Linen, and it is phenomenal on this Pokemon as well. So why is this Pokemon a loser? Well, when it comes to Go Battle League, yeah, doing Body Slam really rapidly isn't all that impressive. I mean, look at Munchlax. Munchlax ain't making it. And the only reason why Vigoroth is kinda making it is because it has counter damage to back it up. Counter being that all ubiquitous fast move, doing tons of fighting type damage, even coming off of Pokemon that aren't fighting types. Uh, Snarl ain't no counter. Good energy gains, but not that impressive of damage. To make matters even worse for Galar Linoon, uh, its other two charge moves really aren't all that good. We got Dig and Gunk Shot. So Gunk Shot could hurt a Fairy-type Pokemon a lot. Dig could hurt a Steel-type Pokemon a lot. Um, but neither are quite enough to really KO them. And both of them are kind of too slow to work out all that well in combination with Body Slams to take stuff out. So overall, Galar Linoon is a good neutral Pokemon uh, in the Go Battle League. But I feel like other Pokemon are kind of doing the same idea a bit better, and Galar Linoon's going to have a really hard time standing out. If they buff these two charge moves, Galar Linoon could climb the ranks and actually be a meta-viable GBL-type Pokemon, uh, but for the time being, it ain't. Now, as far as the Sylpharina is concerned, yeah, Linoon basically appears everywhere it can because Linoon is so freaking good, and this is basically a Linoon, but with Body Slam. So expect to see Galar Linoon showing up in Sylph Cups in the near future. In fact, this Pokemon's so good, it's been banned from the Sorceress Cup, which is the month of June's Sylph Arena Cup. I do have an analysis coming out on that this weekend, so if you want to check that out, make sure to subscribe to Swag Tips if you are curious about the Sorceress Cup. Uh, but for the time being, I don't have that content yet, and uh, this guy's banned from it because he's too good. Now then, the winners. I wonder which two top popular Pokemon today have won the Galar Lottery here. I don't know, you tell me. Now on to our list of winners here, and the first winner of the winners is the Galarian Stunfisk. Yeah, I told you guys in the Galar analysis I did months ago, this thing was going to be hot, and it is. So it's basically the same idea as Stunfisk, right? Stat-wise, all that, uh, move pool-wise, but it's a steel type, not an electric type Pokemon. So ground steel opposed to ground electric, which is better defensive typing to begin with. So setting the stage here for you. Then it also retained the fast move Mudshot, which is a rapidly energy gaining fast move, one of the best fast moves in PvP. And then on top of that, it got an amazing move pool to back it up, featuring Rock Slide and Earthquake. Now the reason why these two attacks are so significant for Pokemon in PvP and Pokemon in general is that they provide really good cohesive coverage. Like if you can't hit it with the ground type attack, you can hit it with the rock type attack and vice versa. Other combos like this uh, include like Ice and Electric, and you also have Ghost or Dark with Fighting. Those are really good cohesive combination kind of movesets, allowing you to cover all your bases when fighting Pokemon. And when it comes to this guy getting Rock Slide and Earthquake, Rock Slide's the best Rock type charge move aside from Rock Wrecker, and Earthquake is one of the better ground type charge moves, at least as a nuking attack. Which is amazing. You got a powerful bait move in the rock slide, and you have a powerful nuke attack in the earthquake. And on top of that, that earthquake has a same type ability bonus with it. Ground type Pokemon do more damage with the ground type attack. So, yeah, if you thought Stumpfisk was good already in the Great League, uh, meet Galar Stumpfisk. The same idea, but with a better defensive type and a better move pool. Did it get other moves? It also got Muddy Water and Flash Cannon. Don't use these moves. These are uh, here to waste your TMs while you're trying to get these moves. So the best way to think about this Stunfisk in the Great League is it's uh, kind of a better Registeel. Maybe not a 100% better Registeel, um, but definitely a better Registeel at face value. I mean, if you think about Registeel, it's got Lock On, Rapid Energy Gains. This guy has Mud Shot, Rapid Energy Gains. Registeel has Focus Blast for that heavy nuke attack to take down opposing Steel-type Pokemon. And uh, this guy's got Earthquake. Earthquake is better than Focus Blast, and it gets a boost because it's a ground-type Pokemon using it. And then when you have Registeel with the Flash Cannon, Flash Cannon's kind of a bad attack. Steel-type coverage is kind of bad coverage. 
The only reason why it works is because Registeel's getting there so fast and it's got a bonus to it. But even then, it's more often worse than the Focus Blast is. What does this guy have? He's got Rock Slide. You can use Rock Slide for baiting, and you can use Rock Slide for really good coverage. So I'd say this Pokemon is basically the same idea as Registeel, but way better. And the result is, is these Pokemon both have very similar counters. Fighting types and Mud Boy type Pokemon do a really good job of shutting down the Galar Stumpfisk here. And then, like Registeel, Galar Stumpfisk can be victimized by the Meganium, the all-powerful, but this Pokemon actually has a worse time against Meganium than the Registeel does. Registeel fights Meganium, it can often go into Registeel's favor. This guy fights Meganium, Meganium's most definitely going to be winning that battle. Despite these flaws, I'm willing to say that this Pokemon's a better Registeel, so if you haven't built a Registeel for Great League already, for one reason or another, well hey, here is your Registeel, the upgrade. It's Stumpfisk. And finally, we have our last winner of the night, and that is Obstagoon. Obstagoon is the evolution of Galar Linoon. There is no Hoenn Obstagoon. This is uh, exclusively a Galar Linoon type thing. And uh, this guy is awesome in the Ultra League. And to allow you to appreciate what it does in the Ultra League a little bit better, I'm swapping over to PV Poke here. We need impressive examples. Now if you're not aware already, Ultra League has one master, and that master is Giratina Altered Form. Pokemon that counter it are normal type, and dark type Pokemon, primarily, fairy type Pokemon and steel type Pokemon can also get the job done. Obstagoon is a dark normal type Pokemon, and while counter is its best fast move, it does have Night Slash, a dark type charge move, to back it up. And the end result is, Obstagoon, just going pure Night Slash here, beats the Giratina Altered form. And if you scroll down, you can see here that in just about all shield scenarios, except for the 01 and the 02, it beats Giratina Altered Form. That means if Giratina Altered Form spends two shields and you only spend one shield, you win. Any number over 500 is Obstagoon winning here. And the 01 is so close that just about anything could push things into Obstagoon's favor. Like perhaps Night Slash's 1 in 8 chance to boost your attack stat by two stages. Yeah, of course Obstagoon gets the boost. It wouldn't be Ultra League if stuff wasn't getting the boost. Am I right? So overall, Obstagoon completely dominates Giratina Altered Form to the max, which is already reason enough to use it. Now if you want more selling points on the Obstagoon, it beats Snorlax, another Giratina counter, and it can beat Registeel. Now when it comes to the Registeel fight in particular, you are going to have to take it to the two shield situation if you do want to win. Uh, but you can see here that that counter damage all racks up and you can take it down pure counter. Now in this particular simulation, it is getting the Night Slash boost here. You don't need that. I can take that away here and... Uh, you can see that we're still winning this fight by quite a large margin because the Registeel can't even reach the third Focus Blast, let alone a third Flash Cannon to take down the Obstagoon. Of course you're getting the boost here now too. This is like whack-a-mole with the boost. Come on, no boosts. Okay, it can reach the Flash Cannon. Oh yeah, it still doesn't get there in time. And then it KOs on this one so the boost doesn't matter. Matt, PV Poke, well, what's with this whack-a-mole game I'm playing here? I don't like it. At any rate, you can see that the boost does happen. It's a 1 in 8 chance. It gives you plus 2 attack set. At any rate, yeah, Obstagoon beats this guy. Obstagoon beats this guy. Now, you might be thinking, Ryan Swag, it does have Cross Chop in its moveset. Would Cross Chop allow Obstagoon to beat this guy better? And, uh, no, not exactly. If you check out how the fight plays out in the two-shield situation, um, yeah, ends the same. Doesn't reach the third Flash Cannon, let alone a Focus Blast. And then the final two charge moves take it out. So you may as well just use Night Slash to do that job. Same with the Snorlax matchup. It's basically the same situation. You don't really need Cross Chop for that. So while at face value you might think, man, Obstagoon definitely wants Cross Chop so it can beat down on Registeel harder, so it can beat down Snorlax, so it can beat down Alolan Muck. Uh, overall, Obstagoon does not need that attack to beat them. However, the other two attacks really aren't all that great. You got Gunk Shot and Hyper Beam, both really slow to charge up attacks here, but this is the Ultra League we're talking about. And if Obstagoon's gonna get countered, it's gonna get hard countered, right? And if Obstagoon finds itself in a situation where a fairy type such as Togekiss or Clefable have it cornered, well, that Gunk Shot is definitely gonna put in a lot more work than Cross Chop or Night Slash will. So I feel like definite, definite nod to Gunk Shot here just to hit those Pokemon. I mean, think about it. You're coming off of 
any sort of matchup that Obstagoon dominates, right? You got a little bit of extra energy behind you. They bring in their Fairy-type Pokemon to counter you, take you out. That filthy Obstagoon just ruined my Giratina. And you hit them with a Gunk Shot. Maybe they don't even have a shield. Maybe they decide to not shield it because they think it's going to be Night Slash or Cross Chop. The Gunk Shot hits them for massive damage. Uh, same idea for the Hyper Beam, if you want to hit something with a neutral hit, like all around across the board. Uh, but I will say that the Gunk Shot does feature Obstagoon throwing a trash can at its opponent. So I think that's important to consider in your uh, analysis decision making here. Yeah, Obstagoon, crazy Pokemon. Uh, definitely a massive threat in the Ultra League meta. I feel like everyone should prepare one for the Ultra League. So, yeah, that's my uh, 20 cents on that. And there you have it, guys. The first Galar Invasion. The winners and the losers. While the winners and losers were pretty predictable for this, I mean, I predicted most of this a couple months ago in my original analysis, uh, definitely satisfying to finally get them and see their move pools all fleshed out. Now, if you have any questions on this content, comment below, let me know what's up, and I'll be happy to help you out. And if you enjoyed this content and you want to see more like it, well, make sure to subscribe to Swag Tips. Swag Tips. I'd also like to give a special shout out to these patron supporters. If you want to support Swagman on Patreon, Link in the description. But the problem that Berserker has is it doesn't quite do enough. It's not doing enough damage. It's doing damage, it's not doing damage quite enough. It's because it has counter damage to back it up. Counter being that all-knowing, all-powerful 